Whew. What up? Welcome to the vlog. It is my birthday week and I'm off to take advantage of another birthday deal. Nice blue skies today, as usual. We're going to a place called Shin Minori, which I've never had before. But it's got a essentially one for one birthday month deal for their lunch buffet offering, which seems like a pretty good deal. So we're gonna go see if it's any good. This is my sacrifice for the one for one. Yeah. So there's a pretty decent range of offerings for the buffet and the thing that's nice in the menu is that the stuff that's included in the buffet is just marked as zero dollars so if you're getting those you know you're not paying anything extra but if you want to add anything the price is right there and you can just look at it so it's something that's not so good though that's not very good karaoke and uh, Scallops are a little bit small, but it's Singapore, so... So, very quick review of Shin Minori. Shin Minori. Shin Minori. Shin Minori. Yeah, yeah that's correct. Shin Minori. Uh, rather good selection of stuff. Some things were good, some things were less so. The salmon dishes were very nice, so those were good. And uh, something that's worth appreciating is that everything is rather small in portion, which means that you can order a lot of stuff even if you can't eat a lot. So that's nice. And uh, overall, it was a very enjoyable meal, I would say. And you get a one for one buffet portion when it's your birthday month. So that's a very good price. The regular pricing, though, is a little bit prohibitive. So if it's not your birthday, then it may not be as much of a value deal. But it's my birthday week, so I'll take what I can get.
Oof. It's a good thing that I had an umbrella. Hear that? Now, in some significantly interesting news, Singapore and Hong Kong has announced that they are relaunching their travel bubble on May 26th, which is approximately one month from now. Now, they actually tried to launch this last year, but there was a spike in Hong Kong and both sides decided to rain check it. And it's been five months now, and they're finally launching it again, which is interesting. Now, you may think that Hong Kong doesn't sound like a very interesting place compared to Singapore. We're both island cities. The weather in Hong Kong is going to be roughly the same as Singapore around this time of the year. But the difference is that Hong Kong has mountains, and that's a big deal. Still, I'm cautious of being too optimistic. The last time, they literally cancelled the travel bubble one day before it was slated to launch. So, probably I'm going to sit back and watch this for a bit first. Let the first batches of people go and hopefully come back. But still, this is a pretty good development. Hopefully, we also get one with Australia before too long. Although, the news isn't too good because Australia has a travel bubble with New Zealand and they recently paused it because some parts of Australia has gone back into lockdown. So, travel bubbles are still very tricky stuff now, I suppose. And that is enough filming for today. I'm gonna go and catch up with work and I'll catch up with you on the day of my birthday itself. See you then. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> I know it may be somewhat incomprehensible perhaps to a certain class of people out there, but I'm the sort of guy that actually really enjoys spending time alone most of the time. And so I've opted to just kind of stay home and chill today on my birthday. I'm just gonna play some video games, make myself something nice to eat, make a vlog, I've already been to a few places earlier this month to take advantage of various birthday deal. Had a few pretty good meals, so I decided today on the actual birthday itself that I'm just gonna take it easy, spend a day at home. So a number of people have gone ahead and gotten me some little gifts for my birthday. Well, some of them less little than others, but I appreciate all of them, really. My housemate actually went ahead and got me a Steel Series mouse pad, which is rather nice because I don't have a mouse pad right now, so that's a nice gesture. My insurance agent actually got me this card that has a restaurant gift voucher in it, so that's actually, you know, rather useful as well. I'll mm. take it. Of course, my parents have uh, got me this phone, which I went ahead and got for myself in advance like a month or so ago, so I've been using this for a while, it's a nice phone. I still really enjoy the OLED screen. My mom has also sent me this mug cup, very interesting, and it's got these very nostalgic photos from a very long time ago, printed on the surface, which makes it a, you know, very interesting custom-made item. The only problem is that I don't drink hot beverage virtually at all in Singapore, so I'm not sure how often I'll be using this marker, but actually this can just, I guess, just sit on my desk and, you know, be a piece of decor, because after all, you know, it's got my face on it. And
Whew. I want to talk about something of a little known fact about myself. And not many people actually know this, but I used to be a great fan. I used to be really into fighter jets. Basically the planes that go to war, that sort of fighter jets. I used to be really into them a very long time ago. We're talking like when I was eight or nine, something like that. I was perhaps as much a fighter jet nerd as a person who's eight or nine years old could be. The reason I'm bringing this up is because recently I picked up a game called DCS. Now DCS, as you may suspect already, is basically a fighter jet simulation game. It is technically free. I say technically because the game, you can really just download it off of Steam anytime you want. But it comes with only two very uninteresting planes, relatively, by my standards anyway. And so the catch behind the freeness of the game is that you need to shell up some money if you want to get some more interesting planes. And that's what I did. I went ahead and got myself a one of the planes that I quite liked when I was eight years old. That is also apparently quite beginner friendly. But anyway, that's what I'm going to be spending my afternoon on. I'll be just trying to stay airborne with my brand new F-15C Eagle. my first successful proper landing of my F-15 in PCS. It's been pretty fun, though perhaps it's mostly so far more of a plane geek kind of fun because, you know, I've been sitting here, I've been playing with this for a couple of hours now and I've not fired a single round of ammunition, I've not engaged in any weapons play at all. Yeah, it's mostly just kind of feeding the love of the planes, the whole idea of flight and just, you know, staring at at the beautiful form of these planes. Look at that. The F-15 is a very beautiful plane. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> good. Yes! Yo, thanks for the drink, bro! Housemate actually went out and got this for me. thinking that this looks like quite a small dinner even if it's a very delicious one but there's a reason for that I have some fairly elaborate supper plans after this so can't eat too much right now because we gotta leave some space for later is only half of what I bought which means that I'll have to finish the rest on another day I suppose 
Restito ham, cheese, tomatoes. Uh, perfection. Mm. So, the meaning of life, for whatever reason, has been something that's been coming up in a number of my conversations recently. And I suppose, you know, what better topic is there for a unprepared ramble to end off this vlog, right? So I've made no secret of the fact that I am a Christian. And of course, the most straightforward and in fact accurate answer to what is the meaning of life for a Christian would be simply God. God is the meaning of life. And that's correct, but it's not necessarily a very useful thing to say, especially to someone who may not be a theist, because what it would come down to is what does it mean for God to be the meaning of life? Who is God exactly? What is God exactly? So that's something that I can try and give a take on today. I think the quickest way to summarize it is that God is the respectable other that's an odd choice of words. That's what happens when you don't prepare your rants, right? But theism, when it comes down to it, is the acknowledgement that there is something out there that determines your direction in life. Something that doesn't control you per se, but that is so good, that is so high, so numinous, and so bright and radiant, commands such respect or demands such authority that you know that you should follow that. That is what theism comes down to, to me. The acknowledgement that I am not the sole determinant of my life, my soul, the very quality of my existence. And thank God for that, frankly, because what can we do as little creatures of meat and flesh? So God is the great other so-called the end, the light at the end of the world. The thing that gives good and bad, right and wrong, beautiful and ugly, the directionality that it has. God represents the three transcendent qualities. Goodness, truth, and beauty. Theism also, I think, therefore represents uh, the acknowledgement that these things exist, these things are real. Truth, beauty, and goodness. And therefore, when I'm doing something good, when I'm behaving in a morally upright manner, I'm not merely doing it because it feels right. I'm not merely doing it because it, uh, it helps my survival or it helps the survival of my society, of my species. I'm doing it because it is right. Likewise, I believe something not because it's convenient, that it's useful for my survival and all of that, but because it is true. I like something because it is beautiful, not because of the mere sensory pleasantness that it gives me, but because of a quality that it has. Beauty is a quality that really exists in the things that are beautiful. Now, one very important implication of all of this is, I think, what you can call objectivity, which is to say that you don't decide what is right and wrong. Neither do I. I am not bound by the thoughts of other people, but at the same time, I'm not bound by my own thoughts as well. There is objective truth, there is objective morality, and there is objective beauty. And so, the upshot of it is that you're not controlled. The direction of your life, the meaning of your life, so to speak, is not swayed by the currents of society, by the works of any one human being or by or any one uh, piece of the earth because you aim it at something that's transcendent that thing never fails if i were to base the meaning of my life on anything that's transient that's terrestrial on a person on a pursuit on sensory experiences these are things that demonstrably i don't control none of us truly can control 
our faith in this world. So these things are not things that are within our fingers. And so it makes very little sense from that perspective as well to set such things as the meaning of our lives because in which case then we are sitting ducks as far as the fulfillment of our meaning is concerned because these things, the things that we get, the things that we can experience, the people that we meet and how they behave, these are things that are completely out of our control. We have some degree of influence on them but it is minuscule and I think anybody that's lived for any amount of time before would agree with this. There's one thing that you can affect and that's yourself and your thoughts, your conscious thoughts. And therefore, I think it makes sense to attach one's conscious thoughts onto something that is truly transcendent. Now of course, just because it's transcendent and fixed doesn't mean that it is real. There are other reasons for thinking that God is real and other th reasons for thinking that the objectivity of truth, the objectivity of beauty, the objectivity of goodness exists and is centered upon the figure of God, which I won't go into right now. But one effect of believing in God is this solidity of the groundwork that you're standing on. Goodness doesn't change, truth doesn't change, beauty doesn't change. They are all higher things that emanate from the world around us. And no matter where we go, we will find them. No matter what happens to us, no matter what people do to us, no matter what happens to our friends and our foes, these things endure. If they are the foundation that your psyche, that your spirit is leaning on, then you will never be let down. Now you may think that this sounds like a bit of a one-way street. It's like a one-way pursuit of these higher principles by us, these thinking and perceiving creatures. And you know, it may sound a bit hopeless as well because it feels like we're reaching out for these higher, greater things that we are not. And then it'll be an endless pursuit because we will never reach it. We'll never reach this heaven because we cannot be perfect. And that's actually a very interesting question. The curious thing is that I think theism is the curious idea that these things, these higher principles, this goodness, this truth, and this beauty, are not just indifferent principles that are merely there and where we try to reach for them like wolves trying to reach the moon but will never actually reach it but that these things are actually condensed in a sort of being that we call God and this entity actually cares about us in some sense. We have a part to play in this entity's consciousness. That is the curious thesis of theism or at least a theism that is like Christianity. It's something that you could kind of test with your experience as well. I think a lot of us have heard the principle before of you know, certain things where if you want it, you can't be single-mindedly pursuing it, but you've got to go and aim at something that's higher. Give yourself to something that's greater than it, and then that thing will be added on for you as well. Whereas if you try to just go for the thing you want directly, you will lose it. And I think that life is actually like this a lot of the time. Most of the time, in all the important things even, perhaps. The more we think about, you know, the things that we think we need, the things that we think we want, the suffering that we think needs to be elevated urgently, or the things that we think are due to us by some kind of right, you know. The more we focus on these things, the less they tend to be given onto us, and the more unhappy we tend to just get. Whereas, if we aim at something higher, if we aim at the transcendence, if we give ourselves to the highest, greatest thing that our spirits can perceive, whatever it may be, then these things have a habit of, kind of, of coming around. The things that you actually need, that can actually add value to you, tends to come around when you aim, not at it, but at something greater. And by aiming, I mean giving and serving, giving of yourself, and doing what you can to pursue it. That's how life looks to me. And I think that this is something that I've been thinking about quite a bit 
that I've watched other people go through, that I've myself gone through. And this is something that I deeply believe. And I think that this also is something that really underpins my Christianity. Ooh. Ah. Well, that was kind of chaotic. That was completely unprepared. And that's what happens when you don't prepare for your rambles, I suppose. Especially when you're trying to talk about a rather difficult topic. But anyway, I think that's probably enough for today. It's not even my birthday anymore. It's past midnight already. So, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my mosquito ham and tomatoes and cheese. You have a good day and I'll see you again in the next video. Have a good day.